Hey guys, it's me, Malibu Darby. Welcome to my channel. Today we're talking about boobs. Again, I know. But we are two years post-op. I still get a lot of questions and comments on the videos that I did regarding my surgery. And I just wanted to do like a reply to I guess some myths that I get pretty often. This is gonna be a pretty short video, but I just wanted to do like a follow-up to some questions that I get pretty often that I'm kind of surprised I get as often as I do and I just want to like give people the honest real truth on the surgery um so if you're already here please go ahead and hit the subscription button and let's jump right into it okay so if you are new to the family um two years ago September 2017 I got a mastopexy with augmentation fancy way of saying I got a breast lift and implant um I will go ahead and put all the information about my surgery that I have in the description box um and then over here for iCards I will just put a couple of the videos that I have recorded in the past about this surgery if you have any questions about this surgery or like more um in-depth healing details and information like that I definitely recommend watching those videos if you have not already um, it may answer a lot of your questions or give you some really helpful information. But today we are talking about some questions and things that I get pretty often. Um, I know specifically some questions about like scarring and stuff like that that I just want to kind of like clear up and just give you all the real honest truth about the surgery so that you can make a decision on if it's for you or not or if you can just figure out like how to mentally prepare for surgery if you've already made the decision to get it. So I did a video um, with push-up tape a few weeks ago maybe a few months ago which helps you to lift your boobs and certain outfits and things like that where you can't wear a bra and some people were like what you gotta lift and you are using push-up tape how can this be well that's kind of what like helped me spark and realize like some of these questions i get asked a lot that i think people just don't understand about the surgery so the first myth that we are gonna talk about is perkiness basically you will never have to wear a bra again after you get a lift. That is false. So skin is skin. Uh, they can put things in your skin, but they cannot change your skin and what it does. So skin stretches, uh, it loses elasticity over time. Um, so if you have an implant or anything, even if you just get a lift, no implant, over time, gravity is going to take its course and your skin is going to lose elasticity. There is nothing that the doctor can do to change how your skin naturally acts. Um, so over time, which is like most people get their implant redone after 10 years and that kind of thing, over time, your boobs will lose some of their perkiness. So for me, saying this is a $5,000 to $10,000 investment, I want to protect my investment. So if I feel that wearing a bra can help deter and gravity doing its thing with my skin, I'm going to wear a bra as much as I can. I sleep in bras. Now, when I want to wear cute tops or go out to the club or just feel like not walking around with the bra on, then I do that and I'm happy with the perkiness of my breast. But I still tell people like wear a bra because I don't want to accelerate what nature's already trying to do. Nature's already trying to make my boobs sag. I don't want to accelerate that, especially because I have a couple pounds of something in my breast already weighing them down. So I still say you should wear a bra. You don't have to wear a bra. That's the good thing, but you never have to wear a bra. If you don't want to wear a bra with your regular natural boobs, you don't have to wear a bra. But I have people ask me that and I'm like, no, I definitely still wear bras and my bras are more expensive now because my boobs are big and I can't just get a size B from TJ Maxx anymore. Also with the perkiness is like, can the perkiness be altered? People were like, why are you still having to take your boobs up? Why would you do that? So I'm a 34G, 34 triple D. If you know, I'm trying to just buy a bra, like somewhere that doesn't maybe have those kind of sizes. Um, a 34G sitting up here would look, for me, would look a little crazy. So I told my doctor, and when I showed him pictures of what I wanted, it was natural large breasts. I wanted my breasts to sit like natural perky boobs, hang naturally, but perky. So that's what he gave me. I didn't want my boobs up here. I think a lot of times when people see implants that sit really high, uh, it's usually a girl that's very thin or she's got a smaller implant on a smaller frame. Uh, so she might have a full C implant, which can sit up higher. But to me, a 34G sitting up here would look very unnatural and I wanted a natural look. Uh, most people don't even know that my breasts are fake because they do just look like, 
I had someone comment, <laughs> they said something on Facebook and they were like, I thought she just had a great rack. And I'm like, well, good. That's, I just wanted my boobs to look like good big boobs. Um, so when I first got my implant, they were up here. Do you see how that looks? For me, that's not the look that I wanted, having them up to my chin. So I asked for them to sit normally. I know a lot of people are like, well, I don't want to pay for my surgery and have to still tape up my boobs. When I go to the club, sometimes I want it up here. When I'm going to work in my cardigan, when I'm going to the gym, when I'm going to church, I don't necessarily want them up here. So I take them up when I want them higher than normal. If you want them higher than normal and you want like super high implants, tell your doctor that. They're going to give you what you want. That's why you're paying so much. Tell them the look you want. Show them a girl with them as high as you want them and get what you want. Don't let me stop you. This They do not have to sit naturally. You can get whatever you want, wherever you want. So that's a big one that I got a lot of questions on of like, why would I still need to take my boobs up? You know, sis, get them high. Lip, do you. The second, the, well, I guess we're on third now. The third thing that I hear a lot about is that you'll have to hide scars for the rest of your life. So I think it's really important to know that you have to research incisions. There are donut incisions, which is just around the nipple. There are the anchor incision, which is what I got. There are a lot of different incisions and your doctor will tell you based on what you need, what kind of incisions what you're, that you're gonna have to do. An anchor incision is going to give you an incision that is going to go down your breast. So depending on how you heal, you will have a scar. Now, that's not to say every skin tone heals differently. Uh, people with different ages heal differently. Some people keloid, some people just heal dark. If you have scars from childhood that are still significantly dark, you are probably going to have a scar from your surgery. But y'all know I always say, do you want saggy boobs or do you want a scar? I do not feel that at any moment I have ever been hindered by my scars. I have never not been able to wear a top because of my scars. I have never felt subconscious in a bathing suit, in lingerie. I have never felt subconscious in my scars, but that's me. But that's because I went into it expecting scars. I tell people to prepare for the worst. And then when your scar fades away, you're like, oh, what was I concerned about? But that way you're not in shock because you have this scar that you convince yourself you would never have. So I do have an incision going straight down, straight down the middle, two lines on each boob. Well, one line on two boobs, um, but it doesn't bother me. I did use some like scar stuff before, but I stopped because I don't care. But I think it's important for you to talk to your doctor and look at your skin and how you've healed and kind of come to terms with that ahead of time. Um, I tell people, so let's just say you have scars. Let's just say you get the surgery and you have a big scar down your boobs. Are you still happy? If the answer is no, I would think about if you really want the surgery because I would hate for someone to be stuck with scars that they hate and they're like embarrassed about after the fact. Um, I think I get asked sometimes like, how can you know if you need a lift or not? So again, y'all know I'm gonna say talk to your doctor. I can try my best to help people, but only your doctor can really give your specific situation um, the recommendation that you need. Um, so I didn't think I would need a lift. I thought I was just gonna get an implant and I walked in to two different doctors and they both were like, we want the lift. So again, just talking to your doctors, um, there is a condition called Snoopy boob, which is literally uh, if your breasts are, do need a lift or if your breasts, your areolas are pointing down and they do an implant, literally like Snoopy, like the nose is down here and your boob will look deformed. So if they tell you you need a lift, get a lift. There's no way to know automatically. I mean, unless you just know your boobs are just really sagging and sitting low. Um, but the goal is to have your nipples pointing forward. So if your nipples don't point forward, somebody may suggest getting a lift. So again, mentally and financially, be prepared to possibly need a lift with your implant. Another question I get asked a lot is still about sensation, sensation in your nipples. Um, again, I hate to answer these kind of questions because I don't want anybody to make a decision based on my answer. I would hate to tell you that I got all my sensation back or I got none of it back and then you get the surgery based on that kind of information and then you don't get your sensation back or you do get it back and then it's my fault because you were expecting to have the same result as me. Um, so I tell people watch the surgery, any surgery I say watch the surgery so you know what you're paying somebody to do to you. This is super invasive. They are cutting skin, they are putting stuff on the table, sewing it back onto you. It's some nerve damage that is happening. So depending on 
you and your surgery you could never get sensation back and that's okay uh we are two years out i have regained most of my sensation i have not regained all of my sensation i'm being very honest with y'all i have not regained all the sensation i had before um surgery and i'm totally okay with that like i feel normal i'm not like you can't punch me my boob and it's like i don't feel it it's not like that like i don't have a sensation like that but i tell people again like with the scarring just imagine if you get the surgery and you don't get sensation back are you still happy you got the surgery if the answer is no then think about if you want the surgery because i just hate somebody to be stuck not having sensation and they feel like this was an awful trade-off to me it, it that was not even a concern of mine at all uh but people ask about that a lot actually like a whole lot um and i have regained most of it to a comfortable level so just something to think about there's really no way to predict how your areolas are going to heal so there's no way to really like tell if you're going to get it back but just to, something to think about i think I think that covers most of the main ones. I didn't want this to be a long video. I just wanted to answer some of those questions. Like, I had some people like, what? When I did that push-up tape video. And I'm like, guys, I still, I do push-ups because they recommend push-ups for perky chest. Like, I, that's just, I feel like it's always striving to fight gravity and fight nature. So I'm like, if I can, if I want them like this for one night and taping them with push-up tape, we're gonna get them up here for one night, then I'm gonna use a push-up tape. But you guys know I'm an open book when it comes to the surgery. I have so many people still messaging me. I've talked to people pre-op, post-op. I've seen pictures of their boobs after and I feel like I went to surgery with them. So I'm a super open book. So please comment below any questions you have. Um, of course, I have my doctor's information below. Uh, Dr. Larson is amazing and I literally over talk about him. So love my doctors and my whole um, staff and office that I work with. Um, there's no kind of sponsoring on this, by the way, because I know I keep mentioning them. There's no kind of sponsoring on any of this. I wish it was. Feel free to use the email if you guys want to sponsor this. Um, but just want to help people and answer questions and be honest about things because this is a serious surgery to be lying to people about the results so thank you guys so much for watching you see i pulled the camera out today because everybody's like you never show your boobs if you follow my instagram at malibu darby you can see my body and tops and stuff all the time so you kind of know how they look so again thank you guys so much for watching hope to help you in your decision to get a lift or an augmentation um and that's it I'm out. Don't talk my boots for the night. Bye, y'all.